identify it and let that thing go. If you don't identify your Jonah and put your Jonah in the sea, your Jonah will take you into the sea. Amen. Let it go before that thing goes with you. There was a time the Lord gave me a message. The title of the message was deal with it before it deals with you. Deal with it before it deals with you. So you need to identify your Jonah and put the Jonah in the water before your Jonah takes you into the water. That was what these people were doing to lighten the ship. But Jonah was gone down into the side of the ship and he lay and he was fast asleep. The church was sleeping once the judgment was in the world. See, when you run away from the presence of God, there is only one destination. You go down. When you run away from the presence of the Lord, there is only one direction. You go down. Jonah was gone down. He went down. There were about six downs in that particular scripture. Now, in, now the Bible said Jonah went down to Joppa. Jonah went down into the sheep. Jonah went down into the lowest part of the sheep. He laid down and was fast asleep. And then he went down into the sea. And then he went down into the belly of the fish. About six times. Because he left the presence of the Lord. When you leave his presence, there is only one destination. You're going down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not meant to go down. Because we are the head and not the tail. We are from above and above all things. We are not meant to go down. Hallelujah. But God is very loving. Even though church, even though the church was going the wrong direction, he prepared the fish to swallow the guy. That fish was custom made by God. Because if it had been an other fish, it would have killed the guy. How can you survive in the belly of a fish for three days? So you are surviving the sickness because God is in control of your life. It's been years that you've been a cancer survivor. Some people get it within months and they are gone. It's because God has the final say in your life. Hallelujah. It's because God is not meant, your, 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 uh, your, your end is not meant yet. You see, absent from the presence of God is present in the presence of calamities. Absent from the presence of God is present in the presence of calamities. Let me say it again. Absent from the presence of God is present in the presence of calamities. Let it minister to you. <laughs> Absent from the presence of God is present in the presence of calamities. So Jonah was absent from the presence of God but he was present in the presence of the storm, calamities. And look at this. You see, God is very wise. God is very, very wise. God is very wise. When you look at creation, God always creates the environment before he creates a product. Because it is the environment that will sustain the product. So he created the heavens before he created the stars and the sun. Because they are meant to be there. He created the earth before he created the plants. Before the plants, it's the, the livelihood of the plant is as a result of being in the soil. He said that the, the birds to fly in the air, in the skies, those were created before the birds were created. The sea was created before the fishes were created. Eden was created before you were created. <laughs> I don't know if it's making sense. Eden is the presence of God. That is the only place you will survive. 
See, the day that the fish will leave the sea and say, I'm going to a vacation on the island. Come on. That fish is dead. And the day that the bird will be like, oh, let me take a cruise in the sea. That bird is gone. Right. The day you disconnect yourself from the presence of the Lord. Some of us, not some of us, some people, because may it never be your portion. Some people, there is something we call living dead. They are living, but they are dead. Because they are out of the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. So absent from the presence of the Lord is present in the presence of calamities. Now David said, where can I run away from your presence? Where did Jonah think he was going? Come on, where, where did he think he was going? You can't hide from God. He will find you before you find him. You can't hide from him. Because the earth is the Lord and the fullness of the earth. His it's eyes sees everything everywhere. Now he said, if I go into the heavens, you are there. When I'm on the earth, you are there. When I go to the deepest part, you are there. Where can I go from your presence? So where do you think you are running to? It's high time you surrender. Yes, Hallelujah. Are you not tired? Are you not? Are you not tired? Are you not tired that the same thing keeps happening in your life over and over and over? Are you not expecting a better result? Are you not expecting a better news? Why don't you just give up and be free? Huh. Because God will always win. He will always win. He will get what he wants to get with or without you. Now, sin will take you further than you want to go. Yeah. Keep you longer than you want to stay and cost you more than you want to pay. Yeah. Sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay and cost you more than you want to pay. When you leave the presence of God, you begin to pay. Bible says when he left the presence of God, he went to Joppa, he found the ship, and then he paid the fare. Some of us, we are paying some debts that we are not supposed to pay because we've left the presence of God. If we are in his presence, he will supply the needs according to his riches in Christ in, Christ in glory. Hallelujah. But when we leave, we, 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 we try to be on our own. You, you remember this guy, um, the prodigal son. Now, the Bible says he was, he was in his father's house and then he decided to leave. Okay? Now, the word father is the word Abba. Alright? The word Abba means foundation. It means source. It means protector. It means provider. So, the guy left his father. Meaning, the guy left his foundation. He left his source. He left his protector and his provider. Now that you have left your provider, it means you are now going to provide for yourself. So when he went to the faraway country, he began to provide for himself, but he couldn't. And he was now feeding on the food which belongs to swine. Because he has left the presence of God. It is costing him more. He can't pay his rent. He can't pay his bills. He's not able to survive than to come back home. When you come back home, he will take care of you. Somebody stop running. Stop running and come back home. There is abundance in the house. Hallelujah. It says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. And all other things will be added to you. Stop running after all other things. And only seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And the things you are struggling to get. The things you are bowing down to get, the things that you are giving bribe to get, they will follow you. They will look. They will find you. Find yeah, they will find you. When you position yourself well, the places will locate you. Your point of position plays a vital role as far as your miracle is concerned. I don't have time to... <sighs> now... <laughs> He was sent to Nineveh. He decided to go to Tarshish. Let's look at Tarshish and, 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 and Nineveh. Now, 
Ashes represent the field of ministry God has not chosen. Hello? <laughs> he was sent to Nineveh and he arose to go to Tarshish. Tarshish represent the field of ministry God has not chosen. So he found himself in a ministry that God has not ordained for him. That is Tarshish. You know you are not a prophet. And always you go about saying, thou sayest the Lord. <laughs> Meanwhile, God has not said anything. Yes. You are in touch. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. You know, as for the voice, you don't have. Yes. And you go about telling people, I'm the worship leader in my church. Ashes represent our will, our purpose, and our agenda. Not God's will. Not God's purpose. Not God's agenda. Ashes represent where we want to go. Nineveh represent where God wants us to go. Ashes represent the vision God has not approved. Some of us may be running some visions that God has not approved for us to run. Some of us may be giving some direction to the congregation God has not approved for us to give. Tashes represent the strategy God has not sanctioned. So you get up and then you, you begin to implement some strategies that God didn't give you the go ahead to do it. Because it pleases you. Tashes represent religious activities that has been substituted for God's obedience. See, God wants his obedience, not religious activities. Don't substitute religious activities to obedience of God. To obey is better than sacrifice. So don't go ahead and be making the sacrifices whilst God needed your obedience. Because he will reject that sacrifice. God only accepts the sacrifices that goes with obedience. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Touches represent what seems good in the sight of the church, but not good in the sight of God. Ah, Touches pushes you to your comfort zone. Nineveh pulls you out of your comfort zone. Nineveh is the place that God calls, but you don't want to go. God said, go to Nineveh, go preach to them. It's the place that God is calling, but you don't want to go. Nineveh is the people who have hurt you deeply. And God says, go and give them my message. And you say, uh-uh. The one who has hurt you deeply. <laughs> it might be a husband, a wife, a boyfriend, whatever it is. A sibling, a boss. The person has hurt you deeply. God say, go and forgive that person. Go and give them my word. You say, I'm not going. <laughs> Nineveh is the people you hate. But God loves. You don't want to give them the message because you hate them. God wants his message to get to them because he loved them. Don't forget, you used to be in Nineveh. Until the word of the Lord reached you. Help us. Nineveh connects you to your enemies. Tashes connects you to your friends. Well, there, there are some people you want to mingle with. All right? <laughs> there are some people you want to find yourself in that association. And there are some people you don't want to be seen among them. So, Tash is like you, you find yourself among your friends. Nineveh is where your enemies are. And that is where God is calling. You don't want to go. How can they hear if there are no messengers? 
How can they hear if there are no messengers? How can they hear if you will not take the message to them? How can they be encouraged if you don't encourage them? How can they be taught if you will not teach them? How can they be blessed if you don't want to bless them? That is your mandate. I have some few scriptures and we will be out of this place. What do you do when God says go to Nineveh and you hate the people? You have to think about it because very soon he's going to tell you to go to Nineveh. And the Lord is ministering to the hearts of people. I sense it strongly within me. Somebody you need to forgive. It is the person who brought hurt to you, not you brought hurt to the person. But the Lord is saying, forgive. Yeah. Will you go to Nineveh or you will run to Tarshish? Why will you let your blessings to be hindered because you, you, you don't want to say sorry? You don't want to say, I forgive you. That is all that is required of you. Are you not heavy? Are you not tired? How long will you hold on? How long can you carry it? Is it not weightier? Are you not feeling the burden? Are the yokes not heavy on you? Don't you want to be liberated? Help us, Lord. The God we serve is the God of second chance. That is where grace comes in. Now, so in Jonah 3, 1 to 3, now the word of the Lord, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh. So now the guy is going to the, wrong, to the right direction. From today, you will begin to go to the right direction. Hallelujah. From today, you will begin to go to the right direction. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was a city, great city. It was a three-day journey. Now, let me give you these three lessons and, 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 and that, 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 that should be fine. Three lessons. One, Jonah's rebellion brought the storm to the hidden ship. It was Jonah's rebellion that brought the storm to the ship. It was Jonah's rebellion that brought the storm to the ship. May I suggest that it is the church's rebellion that is bringing the storm to the world. Because the Bible said they are, they are hidden. They are, let me say they are, they are Gentiles. They are unbelievers. So the believer found himself in the, in the ship of the unbelievers. And the presence of the believer rather brought the storm to the unbelievers. It is a suggestion. That because the church is going the wrong direction, the storm is in the world. Now the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name they will humble themselves. They will turn from their wicked way. They will repent from their sins and they will pray. He said he's going to do what? He will hear from heaven and then do what? Heal the land. Remember, the land is made up of the believers and the unbelievers. But those who are responsible for the healing of the land are the people who are called by the name of the Lord. So if those of us who are called by the name of the Lord, we will not turn from our wicked way, we will not repent, we will not humble ourselves, we will not pray, then the unbelievers, they will continue to suffer. So the unbelievers are suffering because the church is not doing her duty. Why complain about the darkness when your light is not shining? Why? Why talk about the darkness in the world when you are not shining as the light? It is not their fault. It's because there has been a compromise. It's because the church is lying dormant. It's because the, the, the giants are sleeping. 
But this is the season of divine awakening. The church needs to rise up and take her place. Because the world is suffering. Bible says the endless expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of men. The endless expectation of creation. Creation is talking about everything that has been created. They are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. They are waiting for us to arrive. The world is waiting for us. You are the light. At your presence, darkness must leave. So if the darkness is there, then you are not doing your duty. It was the church rebellion that brought the storm to the ship. Perhaps the challenge in your family is because of your rebellion. You've refused to pray. The Lord has raised you as an intercessor in the family. And you don't want to intercede. So the problem will continue to persist. But if you will rise up and say, I stand in the authority of the Most High God. For the Bible declares that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. As I begin to proclaim the word of the Lord. As I begin to, pro- as I begin to, to pray, every darkness will have to leave my family. Your sickness, who you are hiding in the body of my mother right now, I command you out in the name of Jesus. And the sickness will leave. A close mouth is a close destiny. Don't, 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 don't allow that challenge to persist. See, when God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1, when he said that God, God created heavens and the earth, verse 2 tell, tell us how it looks like. And darkness was on the surface of the deep, and, 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 and the spirit of the Lord was hovering. Remember, God didn't create the darkness. He said God created heaven and earth. But verse 2 was describing what was happening. Something went wrong before the darkness was hovering on the surface of the earth. And because God knew he wasn't responsible for that darkness, he began to speak that let there be light. So if, if, if that thing is happening in your life and you know you are not responsible for it, don't close your mouth. You got to speak light into that darkness. Ah, the child is, is, is misbehaving. The grade of the child is going down and you just cross your legs and sit down. No. Something is wrong. The child is an A student. Now is a B student. And he's going to be minus. Something is going wrong. Don't just sit and say, it shall be well, it's okay. No. You got to rebuke that spirit that is bringing that child down. Because we are meant to be above and above only not beneath. Hallelujah. You have what it takes to rebuke whatever is happening in your life that you don't like it. Two. The hidden in Jonah's story were more in touch with God than the man of God. The unbelievers, they were more in tune than the believer. Because the believer was sleeping. And it was the unbelievers who were praying to their gods. My question is, is the church imparting the world? Or is the world imparting the church? Are you imparting your family? Or is your family imparting you? Are you imparting your work environment? Or your work environment is imparting you. Now, having a sheep on the sea is cool. Because sheep are meant to be on the sea. But having the sea in the sheep is trouble. When the boat is on the water, that is cool. When the water begins to get into the sheep, there is trouble. So... Is the darkness coming into the church or is the church going into the darkness? The boat is meant to be on the water. The church is meant to be in the world. But the world is not meant to be in the church. Now hear this. When I say the world is not meant to be in the church, I'm not talking about the souls in the world. I'm talking about the lifestyles. I'm talking about the attitude. I'm talking about the religious activities. I'm talking about the evil things that are going on in the world. No, it's not supposed to be seen in the church. There are are more scriptures that I I don't want to read. Now, now Paul was talking about sexual immorality. And he was talking about, come on, let me read this. Let me read it. It may help somebody. 1 Corinthians 5, 19 to, to 12. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with the sexual immoral people. 
Now, yet I certainly did not mean with the sexual immoral people of the world. Listen to this. Now, Paul was talking to the church. He said, don't keep company with the sexual immoral. Now, I'm not talking about the sexual immoral people of the, of, of, of the world or with these covetous or extortionists or idolaters. Since then, you will need to go out of the world. But now, I have written to you to keep company with, I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother. Are you hearing me? With anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral, covetous, or an idolater, or a rival, or a, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. Now, the guy is saying, I wrote to you not to keep company with the sexual immoral. But I'm not talking about the sexual immoral who are in the world. Okay? He said, if I'm talking about them, that means that you have to go into the world. And he don't want you to go into the world. Because when you go into the world, you will be influenced by the world lifestyle. But he said, I'm talking about sexual immorality in the church. He says, he said, a brother. Who do you call a brother? The one sitting beside you. So he was referring to something that was going on in the church. He said, don't keep association with the dog. Don't eat with them. Yeah. Hallelujah. So judgment will begin from the house of God. Not from the world. Right. We don't have to approve in the church what God disapproves. Amen. Amen. This speaks volume. The church don't want to accept what God hates. Amen. 